Thank you very much, Karba Natala, for that background. Up. We have guests uh, to discuss this issue in further detail here with us in the Abuja studios. We'd like to welcome Dr. Ernest Tereke of the Department of Political Science at the University of Abuja. Dr. Tereke, delighted to have you back after a while. Thank you very much. Good morning. Also joining this conversation from our Port Harcourt uh, studios, a constitutional lawyer, also a regular on Good Morning Nigeria, Festus Oguche. Uh, Festus Oguche, uh, is a lawyer, as I indicated, uh, pleasure to have you again on Good Morning Nigeria. Thank you very much, Kingsley. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, everybody. And uh, also joining us via Zoom from Oshobo is uh, Professor Emmanuel Remy Aide, uh, Professor of Political Institutions, Governance and Public Policy, Department of Political Science, University of Ibadan. You're welcome to Good Morning Nigeria, Prof. Good morning, and uh, thank you for inviting me to this program this morning. Good morning, Nigerians. All right, uh, gentlemen, uh, well, while the uh, Zoom connection to Shubo is still all right, we might as well begin this conversation with uh, Professor Emmanuel Ayede again, one of our regulars on, on Good Morning Nigeria. We're talking about the law and politics of uh, defection. Let's begin with the politics of, uh, of defection and uh, why we have a sense of, of the history of defection uh, in Nigeria. Let's have your take on uh, whether this has now become a worrisome development in the Fourth Republic. Yes, indeed, uh, it's a worrisome development uh, because um, the rate of defection has increased very rapidly and uh, it uh, um, shows some measure of opportunism uh, within the political uh, system. And uh, what is particularly very uh, absurd about the fashion is that uh, you have movement crisscrossing parties, you have reverse uh, movements as well. So it, it, it becomes very meaningless as uh, politicians are looking for opportunities to realize their individual ambition. So it means that uh, uh, the fashion is a reflection of um, the opportunities that politicians are looking for in order to occupy public office. It does not uh, reflect a change of view or opinion or ideology about the essence of government or the focus of political parties. Uh, in that sense, uh, it doesn't really bode well, both for the polity, for democracy, and for the political parties themselves. And uh, it shows very clearly that uh, the political parties are just uh, mere vehicles for uh, achieving nomination to contest public offices. They do not represent any particular uh, tendency in terms of uh, development programs. So uh, politicians move around because it doesn't really matter which political party uh, you are in. It does not uh, uh, reflect any particular commitment in terms of uh, public good and uh, public programs. So it's, it's worrisome in that sense. And the, it becomes even more worrisome uh, when you now look at the implication it has for the political parties, uh, we complain about political parties that are weak, that are not institutionalized. Uh, when people continue to crisscross parties, then it means that commitment to those political parties are, are nil or near nil, and therefore uh, those to build the parties are nowhere to be found because people just look at political parties as opportunities and they are not committed to the political party as an institution, as an organization of which they are a member and for which they have responsibility. So it's really uh, not good for our democracy. Uh, and it, it has become very rampant, unfortunately. And um, thank you so much, uh, Professor Emmanuel. Let's, have, uh, let's move to um, you know, Port Harcourt. And then hear the views of uh, Fester Soguche on this. Um, defection has been there since 1951 in this country. And then uh, it's been now more or less like a trade uh, when one feels he doesn't uh, belong here, he just moves, and that really, you know, expresses or rather makes one, make Nigerian express his or her right to move and associate with any other political group. What's the take on defection? How positive or otherwise is it in Nigerian politics? Somebody has fairly described defections as political nomadism. 
They are nomads. They move from one direction to the other. The reason is not far-fetched. Our political parties are not rooted in philosophy. They don't uh, have preferences or ideologies upon which these members join. Just like the first speaker said, uh, they are essentially meant as vehicles for people to achieve certain parochial ends and uh, get great political power by all means. It does not portend well for democracy anywhere. Um, the faction is not peculiar to our society. It's, it started in the United States as far back as 1855. And since then, there has been a lot of uh, moves to curb it uh, with uh, defect, anti-defection laws, which are operational till date. We started on a very sound slate in the days of FEDECO, with the decision of the Supreme Court in FEDECO against Mohammed Goni. And since then, it has become the trend that uh, political defection is one that touches on political morality. And people are not allowed to move anyhow, because it tells us also that the sanctity of the ballot is not respected. There's not a sacrosanct as expression of the people's will. And people have come to express themselves positively in that light, under the banner of a political party, and they give it to somebody. And indeed, it is short of fraud, you know, uh, because uh, carrying the people's ballots around with you in the form of a nomadic existence because you're in political office tells us that you have a right over those ballots. It's, they are not your ballots in the first place. So it is not portend well to our democracy, particularly the way they go about it here in this country. Because they see, you see them move from one direction to the other in droves, in their droves. If this current government does not get into power in 2023, you expect that a lot of people who are here will move over to the next to the political party that is in, is in control, which tells us also that there is not much deep commitment to our political ideologies and political direction. And we must have that necessary democratic practice and constitutional license to move things forward. And it requires conviction, and also the 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 the. the the, the mindset that political office is for service, selfless service to humanity, selfless service to your country, and not for your uh, uh, self-serving individual interests. But when you see people move like that, you begin to ask yourself questions, because it's a very difficult thing. And I'm sure it's not so easy for you to see somebody who is Republican and come to come the next one and say he wants to be democratic. He wants to be a Democrat or from labor to the other party. These are things that are not too common these days, particularly with the trend of political issues, with the mod modern developments and democracy that should be the hallmark of our own system here. As far as I'm concerned, the current spate of uh, defections, you know, ship jumping and all that, tells me so much about the level of committee, uh, uh, commitment of our political elites to the democratic experience that we're having currently. And it is something that should be curbed as much as possible. All right, uh, thank you very much, Professor Soguchi. We'll come back to you uh, presently. Now back to the Abuja Studios. Dr. Ernest Tereke, is defection injurious to Nigeria's democracy? Well, I, I think like the first um, two speakers have said, and as uh, most of us know, it is not only injurious to the democratic project, it is um, equally injurious to the developmental strides of the society. Because um, uh, the essence of having a political party is to get power and begin to steer the ship of the state towards a particular direction, whether you, believe to the, you, whether you believe in the right or to the left. And therefore, a political party essentially must have its own ideas about how the society or what the society should be. And it is also expected that if I get onto the platform of a political party, I am buying into the ideas of that party. I am buying into the programs that the party has articulated in its manifesto. I am buying into the philosophy of that party. And therefore, it is expected that if I get elected using that political party, I will begin to implement programs, policies, and projects that are in line with the ideas that the party has articulated within its manifesto. And so midway into, into, the, uh, in, into governance, I jump ship and uh, I jump into another political party that ordinarily should have a different idea, 
a different philosophy, different programs, different policies, other than uh, those uh, articulated by my own uh, initial political party. And so in that light, it is not only injurious to democracy, it is injurious to development and even the political harmony of, of our system. For instance, if you follow what is happening in some states uh, where the courts have stepped in now, for instance, the issue of a Boeing state, for instance, you can find out that governance will suffer in that state, for instance. You will also find out that uh, the political stability within the system will also be unsettled because now you have a group within the, the State House of Assembly, one will be loyal to the governor, one will be loyal to a different political party. And so you have all of these instabilities that will unsettle governance. And so uh, the issue will now be who, which party will control the state. And so it unsettles the political system, unsettles governance, unsettles development, and therefore generally it is injurious to our political system. Dr. Anna, so when, given the background you've just laid, which is really beautiful enough, one could see that there is some ideological confusion, therefore, among Nigerian politicians. Even the fact that this is where we start, this is where I stand for a start, this is where I should go. And uh, I'm convinced, for instance, that this party is where I should be. Mm -hmm. And I've sold that party to my people, and they accepted, they voted for me, and I became. That confusion is... Um, self-serving more or less given the fact that it doesn't really look at the people that voted in mm -hmm. exactly exactly what it is and um, maybe to also say and i'm sure uh, prof can also speak more to this that if you reduce these uh, these things we call political parties really to a scientific test as we have always said in political science you discover that um, they cannot pass to be called political parties because one of the things parties do is to have a common idea that acts as a magnet that bounds its members together. Now, the absence of that idea, the absence of that magnet that holds them together will ensure that that is not a political party. And so rather scientifically, what we have we can pass as uh, political associations or factions, uh, what we call factions in political science. Factions are things that promote selfish interests or sectional or regional interests. And so if I begin to, uh, if I begin to get into political parties solely for the, uh, for, 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 for the reason of getting elected into political office just for my selfish ideas, then what we have really is, is a faction and not a political party because political parties are supposed to promote national interests, not personal interests, not factional or sectional interests. But what you have are parties, sometimes in political parties, you have some individuals you will refer to as leader of the party. You have others you refer to as godfathers of the party. And so the party does not take decisions. The party cannot move forward if those godfathers have not said the party should move forward or the leader of the party has decided on who gets what, when, and how. And so because these, these associations really, these factions really belong to individuals. You cannot have a common idea that will bind the individuals. But then again, it is also important for us to interrogate the factors you know, that, that enable these defections. There are, there are things you can refer to as the push and pull factors. There are push factors within the political parties or the political associations them, themselves that, that push members of the political party out of their party. There are equally the pull factors in other political parties you know, that lure these individuals into uh, leaving their own political parties. Uh, okay, uh, Dr. Ernest Sereke, thank you very much uh, for the uh, points that you have raised. Let's bring in again Professor uh, Emmanuel Ayede. But Professor Ayede, well, still on the issue of the nature of political parties, we would like you to uh, speak more uh, 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 about this, telling us what political parties should be ordinarily and why have they now become special purpose vehicles serving ultimately their uh, personal interests rather than 
ultimately the national interest. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, political parties are very important in, uh, in a democratic system. Uh, first, they, they play a very important role in what we call the aggregation of interest, that is uh, defining uh, the central ideas that a group of people espouse in terms of what uh, vision they have uh, for the political system. Uh, uh, that's very, uh, very, def very important defining characteristics of um, political parties. What it then means is that political parties are able to increase political engagement by selling those that idea, the views about uh, programs that they want to uh, uh, carry out when they um, gain power uh, among the, the members of, of the political community. And so they, they are very useful uh, instrument for political education and also for political participation. Uh, they also mobilize people to vote, you know, uh, and therefore create uh, consciousness uh, of, of the important role that citizens play uh, in the democratic process. Uh, th these are very important uh, uh, roles for political parties. So, of course, the central role of a political party is to gain power and tend to, tend to run government. Uh, but beyond that, it's supposed to uh, create some kind of direction uh, for the government. And that's why it is usually expected that um, political parties are made up of people who share common views, who, who, who believe in, in a certain uh, pro program that they think government uh, should carry out uh, in order to improve the uh, life of uh, uh, members of, of, of society. Uh, but when you have uh, a situation where political parties are just mere vehicles, then you are unable to achieve that. And then they are also unable to, uh, to, to, to be established firmly to play the roles that they are supposed to play uh, within uh, uh, society. In fact, political parties are very critical in terms of even resolving conflicts that you find uh, within society because uh, they enable people to organize themselves and participate in the uh, democratic process. They facilitate what we call the peaceful transition of power uh, from one government uh, to the other. So when you have a situation where political parties are not institutionalized, they are not firmly established, then you have a big challenge in your hand. Because what it means is that political parties are unable to you know, uh, uh, bring society together and organize them for political contestation uh, in a peaceful uh, manner. Uh, and very critical too is that um, uh, political parties, when they become uh, insignificant uh, in terms of uh, how, how government is run, then government becomes uh, predatory. It means that uh, government is not guided uh, by any party program or, or, or party manifesto. What it means is that you have a rule of people who are, are not committed to anything. And then if people vote because they believe in the programs of political parties, and then you have political parties who come into government and they are not committed uh, you know, to fulfilling those programs, then of course the people will be taken for a ride. Uh, uh, they will be a sort of uh, deceived or cheated. Uh, and that's why it's important that political parties not just win, not only win power, but they have members who are committed to, to their programs, members who are committed to building the political parties so that the political parties can be durable, can be institutionalized, and can effectively govern uh, when it uh, uh, win political power. Uh, uh, without effective and strong political parties, uh, you, you can have uh, uh, democracy in, in an organized manner. And that's why there is no society where you have democracy without uh, political parties. Even if it's just even a single party, but usually there will be a party because uh, uh, society has to be governed in a systematic and orderly manner uh, around programs and ideas uh, that usually uh, is consolidated and expressed uh, by the party organization and the party leadership. Professor Emmanuel Remy. Um, first, to Soguche, you've heard what Emmanuel said. He painted a very nice picture of a political party and, of course, what it should be. 
And then at the center of this, we LSI are talking about ideologies uh, being, you know, the central focus of a political party around which all members of the political party, you know, you know, rally around in order to achieve their goals and their, the goals of the nation and for the party. But uh, even in developed climes, I must say, defections happen where these ideologies are really strong, the UK, the US, India, and the rest of them. Um, what would you say, or how would you look at this ideological issue from the perspective of the Nigerian, you know, of the democracy in Nigeria, which is struggling to really uh, move up and start on its feet? appreciate the manner you described it, that um, it's really yet to take its roots or to stand uh, strong. Ideologies are the prime movers of any political organization. Society is founded on ideologies, and upon those ideologies, it functions, and it, 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 it functions around its dialectics and dynamics. When these ideologies are lost on the direction of society, then of course uh, uh, the future and aspirations of the people that constitute it is, are doomed. The fact of the matter is that we had a rush rush democratic system from 1999. All we wanted was for the military to go away. And some of these things we are not taking very, very good care of. Um, look at the constitution we have, for instance. And we felt that maybe by now certain things ought to have been put in place to ensure that we have a very um, paramount uh, democratic experience that will stand the test of time. But here we are still talking about defection. You rightly pointed out that, yes, these things happen even in advanced democracies, but they are being curtailed. Anti-defection anti laws prevail in most of these societies, from the UK to England and all that. In the UK, as a matter of fact, if you defect, a defection calls for the conduct of by-elections. The primary importance of every electoral process is, ex is the expression of the will of the people. And you cannot change it. Like I said earlier, the Elected person does not have the right to move around or bandy his mandate from one political party to the other. As a matter of fact, the Supreme Court described defections as fraudulent and malevolent. That's in the case of Fideku against Mohammed Goni. Read that law report. They said it is fraudulent and malevolent. So it's part of the fact that certain aspects of it are excluded from the Constitution does not mean that they are not applicable. All levels, every strata of elected positions are responsible to the people and the people from which they derive the authority to govern. And when any attempt is made to shortchange them, then of course it goes down to the basis of legitimacy, the basis of representation, the basis of democracy itself. Democratic principles are very straightforward. And as a matter of fact, if you want to place any premium on the elective principle, it must be on the people, because it is the definition of sovereignty. Like I said, it has to do with popular legitimacy. And when you now begin to treat the mandate of the people like something you can bandy about, so maybe something you can uh, you know, throw up in a bazaar, then of course you're not responsible in that position. To the very best of my knowledge, ideologies must be, must be the driving force of every political organization. The, 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 the former speaker said that very, very well. The professor, you cannot move anything around politically, democratically, socially without ideology. And those weak is not just having fecundity of political parties, multiplying them because there's a judgment of the court that says, well, you can form a political party. No. They must be rooted in ideology. During the elections and campaigns in most advanced democracies in the United States, if you see a Republican knocking at your door, coming to converse for your votes, you very well know that he's, that he's asking you to support him, to support his ideologies, which you already know, his manifesto. And you can envision those things that the government will do when they get into office in terms of foreign policy, in terms of economic policy. But you cannot begin to do things haphazardly and arbitrary on the platform of um, maybe a political party that is lost completely in ideology and expect good results. And that's why we are having these type of frails and failures in our democratic experience.
Uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Leland, uh, friend, for the points that you have raised. Uh, back to the studios, we've not uh, delved really into some of the legal constitutional perspectives. Well, I hope we have the better time to do that. But uh, I really appreciate the broad strokes that, gentlemen, you have, uh, you have painted and also the specificity. But there is a, a point that uh, Professor Zoguche raised while responding to uh, my colleague Nandabo's question, and I would like us to pursue that further. Namely, our principal concern is with defection of elected officials. And uh, Mr. Oguche says, look, this is s similar to shortchanging the voters. Some would say it's a fraud on the voters. Others would say, look, you are purloining the votes. That is to say, you are taking their votes without their consent and vesting those votes on another entity. What is your thought on this? I mean, I, I agree with uh, Dr. Oguche uh, largely and uh, completely on this issue that uh, the people sometimes or most times will, um, will have faith in a particular political party not just because of the, the candidate, but because of the political party. Reason being that the party has, uh, as Prof said, has articulated and aggregated the interests, the aspirations, the desires and wants of the people and developed programs and policies around those interests and, uh, and uh, desires and aspirations of, of the people. And therefore, the people buy into those policies, those programs, and those ideas of the political party. That is why they vote for such political parties. And therefore, if individuals elected on the platform of these parties begin to cross carpet as we have seen over over the years in nigeria it means that they are undermining the legitimacy conferred on them by the people who believed in the political parties uh, ideas policies and uh, and programs and so ultimately what it means is that individuals within the nigerian political space are elevating themselves over and above the people who really matter in democracy because we say that sovereignty belongs to the people and the people will willingly confer this sovereignty upon political parties and of course of course uh, individuals and so by the time you begin to trade or by the time you begin to cross carpet with this uh, legitimacy conferred on you by by the people. It means that we are ultimately undermining the people. It means that we are not taking you know, the, the electorates and citizens seriously who said that uh, we prefer the policies and ideas of party A over the policies and ideas of party B. And so in all of these, it is, it, it, it is really uh, you know, an attempt to undermine the place of the people within uh, a democracy. I understand that in Kenya, they refer to it as prostitution to define, to show that, uh, that, that that fidelity that comes with your, your belief and commitment to this marriage of, of, of between the people and the political party has been bastardized. And therefore, they refer to it as a prostitution. So it has legal, moral, and political uh, implications cross the I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Addis, let's hang on to this a little bit. Uh, on, on, on the surface of it, in Nigeria, generally speaking, um, I don't know how true this is, but from my experience, from my watch, from my perspective, people naturally and normally don't go in for ideologies this time around on parties. They follow people they believe they would deliver for them. And in this circumstance, you find a situation where when after being elected, a governor, a senator, or whatever, or whoever it is, decides to now leave the party he was elected on to some other party, the people follow him to a certain extent. They don't normally question why moving away with our ideology, with our ballots, with our votes and whatever, because of something like godfatherism, something like leader of the party, something like it doesn't really have, you know, that strength, the party itself, but the people. 
Uh, well, I, I wouldn't say the people will generally move with uh, uh, either the elected officer or the godfather when the godfather moves. Of course, uh, a political leader or a political office holder would definitely have some followers. If I'm a governor, for instance, and I defect from one party to the other, you will naturally expect that my appointees will move with me. You will also expect that those who are loyal to me within, uh, of course, if I'm a governor, I appropriate my state house of assembly, as we have seen in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And so the state assembly is my personal property, and therefore it, the, the members of the assembly will equally move. But but then it is important to point out that Nigerians believe in the ideas of political parties. And I say this because we have seen examples. In Anambra State, for instance, Anambra has remained within the, the, the has been governed largely and for a very long time by the All Progressives uh, Grand Alliance, irrespective of the fact that APGA is not really seen within the, the, the national political space. Yet, the people of Anambra State believe in the ideas, in the ideals, in the philosophy of the, of, of the All Progressives uh, Grand Alliance, and they have remained committed to that political party. And so uh, whether you bring money bags in, uh, from other political parties, the people are resolute. And then, of course, something very, very instructive happened in the last uh, governorship election in Anambra State. When some voters were interviewed, a particular uh, lady said, that they brought money and said we should vote for a, a different candidate. We collected their money, mm -hmm. but voted for the candidates and the party of our choice. Meaning that Nigerians believe in political parties. Nigerians believe in the ideas, in the policies that political parties you know, articulate. And again, in the study of political parties, you discover that a party really is an alternative to the government in power. That is why you will have a parliamentary system that you, uh, the, the opposition party will have a shadow minister of education, a shadow minister of finance, meaning that you have alternative ideas you want to sell to the people. And therefore, the people will, will compare. And that is, that is why we have choices and options within, polit, uh, within democracy that the people will compare the ideas of a, a, a particular party with the ideas and, uh, and options of another political party. And so if they are fed up with, that, the, with the policies articulated by the party in power, they can decide to switch to the other party, offering them a better lease of life, offering them an alternative policy, offering them alternative programs. And that is why it is important that those who join political parties on the basis of the ideas of the political parties should remain committed to the programs, to the ideas of those parties by remaining within those parties. Even though we have said that, of course, as Prof, uh, as Prof said, these political parties are not institutionalized. And therefore, because they are not institutionalized, there are governance issues and, uh, uh, and administrative issues within those parties which oftentimes unsettle these parties. Uh, we, we talk about uh, lack of internal democracies within those political parties. Mm -hmm. And so when it becomes so serious uh, that uh, some persons uh, may no longer take the heat within the party, they also move. But to a very large extent, I, I want to say that Nigerians still believe in political parties and the ideas of parties. All right, Dr. Edna Soroke, thank you very much. I, 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 I would like to go to uh, Barrister Festus Oguche in our Port Harcourt uh, studios. Now, in addition to all that has been said, uh, some persons will argue that, fine, let's go to the four corners of the Nigerian constitution as amended. Uh, we have used the analogy of, uh, of, uh, of a marriage uh, between an elected person and the voters, uh, but the constitution also recognizes freedom of association. Which is to say, if uh, a marriage is not working out, uh, as the saying goes, if it's uh, broken down uh, uh, irremediably, then the parties go their ways. 
And some other persons will also say that uh, this is what uh, elected officials have been doing. So, are they in breach of the constitutional provision? We know what the provisions are uh, in terms of freedom of association, also in terms of what happens if you are in the house. You may wish to elaborate on this point. The marriage that prevails at this moment is the marriage between the people and the person elected. And that marriage is under the umbrella of a particular political party. Um, there's a particular case in the United States where an independent candidate, while um, who was elected to a particular position, while in that position, switched over to another political party and it was faulted by the courts. So it is much more deeper than just uh, freedom of association. Your right to swing your arm stops at my nose. You did not just get that right from anywhere. The people voted and exercised their franchise, which is a fundamental right. If you look at Article 13 of the African Charter, several articles in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, civil and political rights, economic, social, and cultural rights, recognize the right of the people to participate in the democratic process, either directly or through their rep representatives. And of course, you do that under the umbrella of political parties. It does not have anything to do with rights, right to freedom of association because we are dealing with the votes that emanate from a demography and that demography is still alive and active except you are telling me that all of them have been wiped away by either disease or coronavirus but so long as they are there you cannot go away or move out from that political space from that political um, anchor they have given you with their votes i know being a fundamental right it reminds us also that, also that the fundamental rights are indispensable and inalienable. And that was the argument of force put forward when Prince Abubakar died. That you don't transfer the votes to another person. The people are still there. I know elections are very expensive. But the prime anchor, the main motivation of every electoral process is the people. So if anything happens along the line, like a defection, like death, we should be thinking about going back to the people to exercise their friend to confirm that franchise. It could be a very difficult task. It could be an uphill task, but it's something that is achievable and geared towards ensuring that a proper democratic space is established. So your right to freedom of association does not connote that you as the elected person will go with my vote. It is my vote. And you cannot treat it as as though it is your own property. No, you cannot. There's a decision of the African Court of Human Rights on independent candidates. And uh, it was positive to the fact that, well, if you deny me my right to participate in the political process, of course, as an independent candidate, because I don't join political parties, then it offends my right to freedom of association because I can decide not to join a political party. What is important is that I want to participate directly in the electoral process. That, that decision was overturned. Well, the, eco economic, uh, the ECOWAS courts here in uh, Nigeria overturned that decision to the fact that, well, you must join a political party. That's the very foundation of party participation, political participation. But then if you must do it, you come under the banner of a political party. And if you have come under the banner of a political party and the people vote, by the way, you don't see names of candidates in ballot, in ballot, on ballot papers. And when somebody wins an election, they give, they give you a declaration certificate that says you, Mr. Soso and So of Soso Political Party has won this and that and that. So, so it's not a matter of invoking chapter four or any other provision of the fundamental rights provisions touching on the right to, to, to freedom of association. Your freedom of association stops when you're dealing with the votes that are not yours. They don't belong to you, they belong to the people. And you, if you must defect, you must seek their consent and authority. And if you don't have that consent and authority and you defect, you lose that position. It does, it does not matter whether it is there provided in the constitution or not. That is the tradition of democracy okay thank you so much uh <clears throat> first but still um before we let go you first say let me 
let me just add this and then find out from you exactly. You earlier alluded to the fact that in some developed climes, you know, there are laws that, you know, a sort of, uh, you know, deter people from defecting that really affects them whenever they do. And uh, those laws have been, uh, you know, followed. But here in the Nigeria, I mean in Nigeria, the 1999 constitution, especially some sections like 68 and all online, that, you know, talk about defection and how uh, to deal with them. Um, how do you look at these laws in the Nigerian constitution? How adequate or inadequate have they been? Or what should be done in order to see to it that the spate of uh, defections in Nigeria are reduced to the most minimum? Anti-political party switching laws is uh, not uh, peculiar to advanced democracies. We have it here. You mentioned section 68 of the constitution, though it restricted itself to legislators. But then what we are saying is that in spite of the fact that the constitution is not quite expressive about some of these areas, I won't say it's a lacuna. The Supreme Court has said in DSS against Bakoba that you wouldn't expect the constitution to go into minute details of all provisions. You construe a constitution both in its letters and in its spirit. The spirit of the constitution must conform with democratic principles, doctrines, particularly in the area of political party switching, the votes of the people, sovereignty, political legitimacy, constitutional democracy. These are very fundamental principles of constitutionalism that must be abided with. And to be very, very honest with you, I will say rather without equivocation that if political parties are allowed to flourish as they should be, then we will have less of these movements, these exodus, these nomadic expressions. But then that is not even the point alone because to the extent that I understand, that if you want to have a viable democratic system, then of course it is very, very important and incumbent that these abnormal, absurd, somebody else has used the word absurd, absurd circumstances must be checked. Political party participation requires that the votes of the people be given paramountcy. It is on the sanctity of those votes, the sacrosanctity of those votes, that democracy flourishes and operates. It defines its movement. It defines its dynamics. And if we elongate it further, then of course we are saying that the power belongs to the people, which the Constitution clearly alludes to in Chapter 2. That it is from within this power, within this sovereignty, that offices are allocated People are placed in such offices and the government function. And the paramount importance must be given to the people, the demography, the people that are responsible for the, the organization of government, even though they are passive participants, they're not pa active in the sense that they, also, they already have representations. We must always have recourse to the people. But you see that even some of these constitutional provisions like the power of recall cannot even be effected because of a lot of issues concerning the emasculation of the society. Now it's no longer emasculation by way of uh, uh, um, coercion. It's now emasculation by way of, uh, of uh, poverty, excruciating poverty. And these are the draw lines that we must put into pr proper focus if you have to look critically at the future of our democratic experience and make sure that we nip some of these vices in the board as much as we can, considering also the desperation of the political class, considering also the fact that it appears that political office is the quickest way to make money, to be, well, to be rich, nouveau rich overnight, and to see how some of these things can be lowered to ensure that participation, active participation in the political platform is meant for people who are ready to selflessly serve their country with little or nothing. And a lot of people are bound that are ready to make that sacrifice, not people who want to use uh, uh, political party platforms or whatever to get, to, 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 to seek for ways for their own self-serving enrichment and aggrandizement. That's the point. Thank you very much, uh, Barrister Festus Oguche, raised uh, very uh, critical uh, points. I, uh, I want us gentlemen to explore further 
the issues that uh, you have raised, uh, and that relates to the voters and the votes. You've talked about it ex extensively. That when a person is elected, it is the voters who matter. It is the voters who have vested him and his political party with those votes. Uh, Professor e e Emmanuel Ayede, now you, we've also talked about the breach of trust. When an elected person purports to appropriate those votes and move on to another platform. Uh, we've also said that it's almost like short, it's like shortchanging or purloining of, uh, of, 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 of those votes. I'm just wondering, maybe from a jurisprudential sense, I know you're not a lawyer, but I'll, I'll break it down. A jurisprudential sense that sometimes when we look at votes in an election, we see them as mere numbers. Votes are actually human beings. So when you say that you, uh, uh, Professor Ayade, you defeated uh, uh, Ayade, rather, uh, Professor Ayade, you defeated King Sosa the law by 300 votes. 300 votes means 300 human beings, where it is one person, one vote. So that a vote can jurisprudentially be said to be a juristic person. And therefore, that breach of trust is even aggravated when an elected person purports to defect and then take along those persons unwillingly. What is your thought on this? Let, let, let me use the word mandate uh, to talk about uh, the vote. Uh, because w when people vote and then uh, the vote is collated and it leads to uh, the winning of an election, what we mean is that the people have given that political party the mandate to represent them in government. Because what we actually practice is representative democracy. So you have the mandate of the people. The question then is what kind of mandate do you have? Now, if you have an overwhelming vote or support, we can say you have a, a very clean mandate, a, a full mandate to represent the people. Now, the question usually is, is it a tacit mandate in which you are supposed to go back to the people to inquire from them uh, what exactly they think you should do in specific circumstances? Or do you, you, as a representative of the people, now take the position of the people and doing whatever you think is right for the people? These are perspectives to the idea of mandate. But if you look at the Nigerian constitution, it makes provision for recall, which means the kind of mandate that the politicians have in Nigeria is such that they don't have uh, a tacit mandate. They actually have to uh, go back to the people, you know, to, to be sure that whatever they are doing uh, as representative corresponds to the expectations and desires of the people. But when you move from one political party to the other, you, you create some kind of breach of trust. Now, the question that one will ask, for instance, before these defections, do they go back to their constituencies to say, we want to move from this political party to another political party and get the consent of the people to do so. Th that has not been evident in any of the decisions that we have. Now, when you also look at within the political party themselves, you find that defection is very problematic. Look at the case of Edo State. After Obaseki, Governor Obaseki moved from, the, from APC to, and, and used uh, the PDP as the vehicle for winning the election, he had serious problems integrating into the PDP which means that there is a, 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 a messing up of the, uh, the, 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 what the, the party really stands for. In other words, they came through the party to win power, but in terms of what the party organization is and what it stands for, it's not really typically what uh, uh, Obaseki and his group you know, are used to. So th they have serious problems trying to integrate. So this trust is not just breach in terms of relationship between the citizens and the party and those who have won uh, 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 the, and the government. It's also create, it also creates some kind of uh, problem within the party itself because the, 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 the handing over of the machinery of the party 
to Obaseki for the purpose of that election was also problematic. So we have this uh, dual confusion in terms of uh, uh, carrying the, 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 the decision or the mandate of the people. First, you have the problem with the people. You have not gone back to consult with them in terms of moving from one political party to the other. Then the party itself represents a particular uh, uh, viewpoint, perspective on how governance should be run. And then you bring another person from a different party to, to rise to, govern, to power on the platform of the party. And then the person does not uh, fit quite easily into the organization and then the, 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 the views and, uh, and, and, uh, and manifesto of the, of the political party. So the, what they have done is to mess up that trust between the electorate and those who have been elected and then create confusion within the political party. So it's double jeopardy for democracy uh, when, when we talk about uh, defection. And then when you also look at uh, the, the way the debate now currently has been couched, where they talk in terms of does the vote belong to the political party or the vote belongs to the individual candidate. That's the decision that we're waiting, you know, for the Supreme Court to eventually clarify. Because we have created that problem uh, by the way we are, the politicians have moved from one political party to the other. So whichever way we view, view it, my feeling is really that uh, the mandate that is given to uh, politicians or to political parties does not severe their uh, need to go back to the, the constituent to the citizen uh, 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 in order to constantly uh, get uh, a feeling of what their views are on specific issues. And defection is a major uh, breach of trust in, in that regard. And if we want to build, uh, uh, allow political parties to also uh, be institutionalized and for them to consolidate, we also see that defection is not good for political parties because it now creates internal problem. This is simply because those who, who, who move from one party to the other or, or and want to use a particular party as a platform or, or usually manipulate the political parties. They, they just talk with the godfathers or the what we call the gatekeepers within the political party. And once they get their consent, uh, they just move on, creating uh, ill feelings among members who, are, who think that their positions have actually been either given out or sold out uh, to strangers. So it, it, whichever we look at it, it's not healthy uh, for democracy at all. And I, I think that the Supreme Court will make it very clear uh, very soon when they look at and uh, finalize some of these cases on what mandate really means in the context of democracy in Nigeria. Well, many thanks, uh, Professor Emmanuel Remy. We thank you so much. Uh, gentlemen, so see for the, the bottom line is that defection is just negative to you know, the political system to democracy and to everybody else, given the fact that some people are being so changed. And of course, the main, uh, you know, issue at stake is having to serve the people that really elected you in the office, I mean, into office. We will look at the way out and the what should be done, really, what should the law do or what the lawyers do or what the National Assembly should do and what really exactly would be the way out of this in order to bring this very negative practice to the barest minimum. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll continue with that. The center is... You're welcome back and it's still Good Morning Nigeria, live on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We are on the home stretch of uh, to this conversation, which is on the law and politics of defection. Uh, Dr. Enes Eroke with us here in the studios. There are a number of points that the other guests uh, have raised uh, based on the questions that we asked. First, also, Bujo in Portacourt and Professor Ayede uh, via Zoom from Oshobo. And I asked Professor, uh, uh, sorry, I asked Barista Festus Oguchi the question around associational rights, uh, right of freedom of association, for instance, and uh, what the consequences should be or how uh, those rights should be uh, exercised without consequences, if any. Yeah. Yes, and maybe just to quickly clarify that, yes, a democracy. Uh, guarantees this right uh, of your freedom of asso association that if I am in the in uh, party B today and uh, tomorrow I decide that I'm no longer comfortable with party B I have to move to A the Constitution and even democracy guarantees that right but then there is a view about political parties what political parties uh, are, are, I mean is or are 
uh, there are different views. But one particular view says that a political party is an association of people who believe in common uh, ideas and want to secure power and place individuals in government positions with all its rights and uh, with all its responsibilities and privileges. Now, meaning that I can only enjoy those privileges and exercise those responsibilities if I am still within that political party. And uh, if you read uh, part of what uh, I think Justice Echo said in the case of uh, the Ebo, uh, Ebo State, in the case of Ebo State, you discover that Echo was saying that uh, it was like you can't eat your cake, you can't have your cake and eat it. Now you can you exercise your right quite all right. Exercise your right of freedom of association. Generally, you can exercise that right of freedom of association. But you cannot take what belongs to A to B. If you are leaving A, leave A as who you are. And leave all of the properties, all of the privileges, all of the responsibilities of A within A. You can't appropriate the votes of, of one political party to, uh, to, to another political party. And so while, yes, we recognize that democracy guarantees this right of freedom of association, but then as uh, Dr. Oguche said, your right to swing your, your arm stops at, uh, at my nose. You can't swing your arm up to my nose. And so if you want to exercise that right, yes, exercise <coughs> it, but you cannot appropriate the properties of one Onto, uh, onto yourself. And I think it speaks to the issue of if votes, those votes are human beings or just mere numbers, those votes are expressions of what people believe in. They are expressions of my dream. They are expressions of my wants. They are expressions that I want hospitals, I want roads, they are, they, they are education, they are agriculture. And so by the time you dump you know, the platform you know, that has offered me these roads, that has offered me health, that has offered me poverty alleviation, it means you, you are also denigrating and you are, you are you're also uh, desecrating you know, that, uh, that, uh, that, that faith I had in that uh, political platform? Uh, my colleague, Adabo, I'll, I'll take leave from you and ask uh, Festo Soguche to also comment on this part before we take some tweets, okay. uh, which has to do, uh, but it's Festo Soguche, I have raised that question earlier with Professor Ayede, that so, w when we look at votes, uh, we tend to see them broadly as numerous you know I, if uh, for instance you defeated me in an election by say a margin of 1,000 votes or we say it's 1,000 even if it is one we say it is one or two but I then asked the question that said look actually a vote can't be vested with juristic personality because a vote is cast by a human being a vote contains and embodies a hope for or the hope for some better future or a belief in the candidate as well as the, as, as well as the political party and therefore uh, if you are moving with those votes uh, you are probably taking me unwillingly uh, what's your take on this thank you Kingsley Votes, like I said, uh, has sanctity. Uh, they, they are sanctified expressions of the people. And in spite of the fact that our electoral law forbids uh, the, the electorates to go to court to challenge a particular electoral process, which I think is rather awkward, but it can be explained away on the basis that uh, um, if you allow the electorates to go to court, then of course you have a floodgate of litigations all over the place. But then there's a new law now that forbids uh, the electorate from challenging the qualifications for candidates, which I think is also very absurd. If you are talking about votes, you are talking about the expression of human beings. And it is not too far away from having a juristic personality. That personality resides in the population, the demography, in the sovereignty of the people. 
votes are inalienable being fundamental rights, which means you cannot, you, you cannot, you cannot transfer it from one person to the other. You cannot alienate them because they are attached to the person, the human person, who is conferred with a personality that is recognizable in law. To that extent, Kingsley, you are very correct. And we pray that our jurisprudence will advance to that level where some of these things will be properly and duly recognized. Oh, well, um, <clears throat> thank you so much, uh, First Soguchi. And of course, um, Kingsley, you can see the bottom line is the people. Absolutely. Yeah, the people really are just at the center of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, um, we have some tweets here from Nigerians so, which have uh, really come and maybe we can go through them and they hear the views as we continue. Um, uh, let me start with uh, <coughs> Fassi Nasi Samuel Charles here. He says, good morning Nigerians. There should be a law in our constitution to this effect, defecting from one political party to another after winning elections from the party is totally wrong and, uh, and unacceptable. It heats up the polity. Uh, well, there's, there are provisions in the Constitution uh, against defection. Uh, very plainly, uh, the explicit provision in the Constitution relates to members of the legislature, State House of Assembly, or the House of Representatives, or the Senate. Uh, there are stated grounds for defection, but if those grounds do not exist and you are a member of uh, the legislature and you defect, the Constitution provides that you lose your seat. The touchy point now relates to the executive branch, and some argue that there is a lacuna in the Constitution, but as you have heard from the various arguments, uh, that lacuna doesn't exist, and uh, Professor Soguche stated that uh, much more uh, explicitly. Now, Marvin New uh, sends another tweet. Until the masses stop voting based on personality rather than parties, we will continue to see political joggers crossing carpets, especially at a crucial time like this. You know, we've talked about the really, uh, you know, voting based on personalities and not parties, really strengthening the parties, I would say. Absolutely. Now, Usman Banu Kantu says the Nigerian constitution is not explicit on defections. Otherwise, the rate at which elected leaders across, uh, rather across to another party, couldn't have been so rampant. The politicians are conscious of the constitution. So, the 11 sections of the constitution must be clear, devoid of any ambiguity. Now, Boss Dynamic, that's the handle for this uh, Twitter uh, that has uh, sent in this um, tweet. Votes do not belong to an individual. They belong to a party. Therefore, any politician who chooses to leave his party should also leave the votes behind, which were cast for the party. <laughs> Shinto Tawafik finally says, no legislation can prevent defection in our politics. Rather, the moral standards and loyalty of every party will prevent defections. And these are tweets from Nigerians. Okay. All right, All right. Well, we'll get a closing thoughts yeah, of our guests sure. before we just sign them off. Mm -hmm. uh, beginning with uh, uh, Barrister Faisal Soguche in our Port Harcourt uh, studios, let's get your brief uh, closing remarks on this vexed issue. We know that, I mean, gentlemen, you've made uh, very valid submissions to this topic. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you very much, Kingsley. Um, what is important is that um, votes cannot be treated like chattels, and uh, we are not in the era of slavery, where one's voice is, can be more vulled, the voice of the people can be more fooled. And we also expect some, a bit of uh, serious judicial activism uh, in areas concerning our electoral values. Um, I would say with every sense of equanimity that our pre- and post-election adjudication process has not been in, quite impressive. And we expect that in the area of defections, the Supreme Court to come up with very deft and savvy decision on the matter. Okay, uh, Professor Remy, can we have a closing thought on this issue as uh, regards, you know, what the people should do per se, since they are the ones that have been changed? Yes, thank you very much. I think I've made it very clear. The politicians don't have a free mandate from the people to do whatever they like once they have been elected. The people decide to give them a mandate on certain conditions, and that's why there's recall provision in the Constitution. I believe that the, the Supreme Court will clarify some of these issues uh, when they 
they, they, they give us their decision uh, concerning the cases that are before them right now. I, I think it's important for politicians to know uh, the trust of the people and the supremacy of the citizen must reign for democracy to be meaningful. Doc, finally. Yes, first is to commend the judiciary for the actions uh, taken so far. Only recently we saw that... Um, I, I, I think I, I will be careful about uh, getting into live cases. Yes. Yes, so that yeah, uh, just the matters, to say the matters that, are subject. Yes. Uh, just, just to cite an example that some individuals who even moved away from a particular political party only recently returned. And so, meaning that uh, we have seen these defections because nobody has really come out to implement uh, some of the laws of, of the land. I mean, this matter is already settled. Uh, uh, Kingsley, you mentioned uh, the issue of the legislature, and yet you have presiding officers, you know, who treat these things uh, with, uh, with levity. And so it is to commend the, the judiciary and also to continue yeah. to encourage that political parties become institutionalized, okay. become internally democratic, uh, <coughs> so that uh, they will be able to reduce some of these squabbles, you know, that uh, lead to these uh, defections. All right, Dr. Ernest Sereke, deep thanks. First of all, we appreciate you. Professor Emmanuel Remy uh, Ayede, we also give you a special thanks for uh, your insights into our conversation this morning. The best wishes. Let's go on out to our sports desk or foreign, whichever uh, comes first, as we say in law. <laughs>